Uh, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Uh, so yeah, the the title is uh, history is not being is not kind to uh, has not been been kind to debt monetization and political instability. Um, yeah, I'm what I mean by that title is that uh, it always breeds problems. Uh, the debt. Uh, that countries uh, and governments incur, and it usually leads to a lot of uh, trouble, and uh, especially currency collapse. So, uh, yeah, we've got uh, Grow Mechanic. Hi, Grow Mechanic. Hi, Pablo. Johannes from uh, near Liechtenstein, from Vorarlberg Vorar Vorar in Austria. Jillian. Hi, Jillian. Eileen Kenny. Uh, yes. The, the central banking system and uh, the fiat currency system. That's been going on, I would say, since the late 1600s. It started out in the UK, in England. Well, it was actually at the time it, there was in the UK with the Bank of England, 1694. Uh, yeah, it's a, a really bad system. It uh, favors the uh, oligarchy. It punishes uh, productive work and it pr yeah, it punishes the whole general public and it favors uh, those people on top who have political favors, who, who are already very wealthy. I'm not a communist or socialist. I'm for free markets, but central banking is a monopoly state and uh, the oligopoly, right? So we've got, uh, who else have we got here? Uh, DMC. Uh, DMC really enjoyed the chat with Charlie Robinson that I had. Yeah, uh, we've gotten quite a few views now. Uh, people are still watching that. Uh, let's see who else is here. Catman is here. Hi, Catman. Sack Media. Uh, Dilwyn Roberts. Hi, Dilwyn. Victor Claudio. Hi, Bob Hol Holyoke from Rugby in the UK. Lucas Razor from Cheshire. Hi, Susie Wood. Silver Drill Pickle from South Texas. Marcin Skavinsky from Poland. Uh, Dave from Kitchener, Ontario, Canada. <clears throat> Excuse me. You just have a sip of water. Shane from Orpington, very close to me. Orpington and Kent. Uh, contrarian uh, investment like uranium. Uh, I haven't. Uh, I have uh, done some investment in uh, uranium years ago. Recently, I haven't uh, looked at uranium. Yeah, it could be a good contrarian investment, uranium. Uh Chuck O'Reilly, thank you for the super chat. Gold.co.uk wants copies of ID and proof of address to store gold. Uh, would you trust? Uh, I haven't heard of uh, gold.co.uk. Uh, I mean, why don't you check with goldinvestments.co.uk with Oliver Temple, who I know really well. I've known them for 18 years. Uh, they're very, uh, they're very good. You know, they they run a, 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 a credible business. is It's been in business for thirty years. Uh, check out with goldinvestments.co.uk. Uh, give Oliver my promo code Maneco sixty four, and uh, they store uh, precious metals. And uh, yeah, he'll probably ask you for your name and address, but he's not going to ask you for ID. So, uh, yeah, I would uh, check with him. Check below in the description uh, of my videos uh, what you should do, you know, gold, gold investments. So, yeah, I wouldn't, uh, I'd, I haven't dealt with gold.co.uk. Uh, I've known uh, gold investments, yeah, since 2002. I used to deal with Mike Temple, who's Oliver's and Simon's dad. So it's like a family business, and I know them really well.
Hi, Padenda. Nice to see you here again. Stacking on the low. Jack Nichols. Hi, Jack. Golden Gun uh, says we have uranium in Australia. Well, yeah, Australia is a country rich in natural resources. I think that's why the Chinese probably have a lot of influence there right now with what's going on, which is really, uh, really amazing. I think what's going on in Australia. Jeff Logue from South Georgia. So uh, let's get into the subject a little bit. Um, and then I can also answer questions if I, if uh, there isn't that many people and I can see the questions, but uh, basically there's a lot of uh, examples in history. Uh, one of them uh, is like in the 1790s, uh, revolutionary France, of course. Uh, we've got this book here, which I've recommended many times, Fiat Money Inflation in France, how it came, what it brought, and how it ended, Andrew Dixon White. Not a long book. I highly recommend it. You can get free PDFs online. But that started because uh, the economy was in a depression. The French state, the monarchy, was, uh, yeah, bankrupt. Uh, and, and that was a result of many things from the past. Uh, in 1720, you had the uh, Mississippi bubble that uh, bankrupted uh, France. And then, uh, yeah, and, it, uh, and then you had the war... Uh, French-American war in North America as well. That bankrupted France even more. So they decided to go on an experiment and uh, of issuing paper money. And they even backed it, though, by the land that they had confiscated from the clergy, from the church, from aristocrats as well. And uh, apparently the land was worth 400 million thousand livres it was called, and they only issued 400 uh, million uh, in paper, and that was like totally backed by land. They, they thought that uh, the money uh, or the paper money would be backed by productive um, assets like uh, farms and uh, buildings, and uh, the idea is just like... Uh, all the time, uh, Keynesians, you know, because Keynes was nothing new, not revolutionary. People had been trying what Keynes tried many, for, for hundreds of years. And they thought that uh, just by issuing paper money, which is really a fraud, it's not honest to issue paper money, because uh, paper money or paper currency is a receipt for real money, gold and silver. They thought that they could kickstart the economy and usually it does kickstart the economy for a while, but then you get, uh, then it goes down again. It's never like steady and sustainable. So what do they do? Whoa, let's uh, create more currency. So they do that again uh, and uh, it keeps going. And that's what they did. They started out uh, the French National Assembly. It had just been set up after the revolution. And funnily enough, the king was still in power there, but the National Assembly was set up. Uh, they had a lot of debates, and they had a, a lot of clever people, a lot of financiers, scientists, statesmen who were very uh, intelligent and knew all about, uh, you know, the John Law, Mississippi bubble, uh, the back hole. They were very careful, but it still didn't work. Eventually, they created so many of these assignats that they became worthless. So it took about six years in France, and uh, it led to Napoleon coming to power. It led to the Napoleonic Wars. Uh, and I would say France has been uh, in trouble ever since. And uh, we have the example as well uh, of uh, the UK during the uh, South Sea bubble. A lot of debt had to be incurred by the government. Uh, we have the example, of course, of the Confederate States of America. Uh, they had to uh, issue a lot of debt. I think foreign investors bought a lot of the Confederate bonds. And then 
Yeah, they didn't survive politically. They lost, and uh, Confederate dollars became worthless. And even the uh, greenbacks became uh, worthless, even though uh, the North uh, or the Union won. And uh, another interesting example is actually the Russian uh, monarchy, the Russian Empire. I saw an interesting uh, documentary about... Uh, the building of the uh, Trans-Siberian Railroad, and that started in 1890. Uh, I think it was the, the Tsar Nicholas's dad who started out. And the thing is, Russia is such a uh, such a huge uh, country that uh, communicate communications from Moscow to Siberia to the east took weeks or months. So, and Russia was quite backward, but they decided to uh, spend billions. Uh, in today's money, building that uh, railroad. Uh, and it, it took them until 1904 to get it completed. It bankrupted uh, the Russian state. It triggered the war against the Japanese. It eventually triggered uh, the Bolshevik Revolution, mainly because the state spent so much money on this railroad instead of maybe uh, helping uh, the social aspect of the country so you can see how these things trigger really uh, events. And in, in the case of Russia, something that is affected made the, the Russian history of the last hundred years so turbulent. I would say the building of that railroad uh, is quite, uh, had quite an impact. I'm going to put a link. I'm going to try to find the link to that YouTube channel, uh, YouTube video, and I'll put it bel below in the description later on. So now we'll go to some questions here. DMC, quite a few similarities to the examples given from the late 18th century France to what is happening globally today. I agree, you know, and uh, politically, I think there's so much division, especially in the U.S. Uh, and I think the two candidates we have right now are so <laughs> divisive and uh, I'm not going to say who I favor. I don't favor any of them, but uh, I think it's a reflection of how people are divided in the U.S., but it's not only in the U.S., it's here in the U.K. and elsewhere. Uh, I think there's a lot of instability, and, and I think the, uh, the uh, establishment is losing a lot of uh, credibility. That's not good because uh, a national currency is uh, only as good as uh, the people in charge, uh, if people are corrupt, if, if people don't follow the rules, people are going to lose faith and confidence in their leaders. And, and that's why the poorer countries uh, like in Latin America and Africa, their currencies don't last very long because the establishment there, they haven't had as much practice as the establishment here. But I think the, uh, they're going too far, I think, in Europe, in the UK, in the US, in Australia especially. So that's why I think it's so important. Uh, and I know I say this almost every time, but I need to repeat it. Uh, if you have uh, a lot of uh, fiat currency savings, you need to try to get some precious metals to protect yourself or maybe even get something else. Maybe try to, uh, like Catherine Austin Fitt said, build a garden if you have space, be more self-sufficient train yourself or help your family train into getting some kind of a uh, skill to become self-sufficient. I think that's what we need to try to be self-sufficient and not be dependent on the state because they're going to use this crisis to try to lure people into uh, this uh, new world order system, really, where if you don't uh, play ball, they'll cut your benefits, they'll cut your, uh, your mobile, your your card, your spending. So if you're able to stay outside the system, if you're self-sufficient, it should help. Hopefully they won't succeed. Uh, Padenda, do you prefer one PM over the other, gold or silver? Uh, no, not really. Not really. I like both. I like both. But I, I, I think uh, silver, uh, I think you don't need as much silver because I think silver is going to outperform gold. But I like both, really. And uh, I prefer, uh, I think silver is the best in terms for the general general public. I, I think silver is really great. 
Uh, I've been buying recently some coinage, uh, pre-1920 UK coinage, and they have had such great coins in like all denominations. And uh, it's great change. I think it could, could come back as a barter, well, as money. But gold, I think, is more uh, for savings. Um, yeah, I like both, though. Everyone ha has uh, their preference, though. Uh, Chris Varga, do you think the riots happening across the world are really because of tightening of the purse? Well, I, I mean, there's a mixture of, uh, you know, uh, riots. I mean, prior to uh, the crisis this year, we had the Yellow Vest. We had Hong Kong uh, and other countries like uh, Lebanon right now. Uh, I think it's a mixture of things. I think people are unhappy. Uh, you know, looking back 200 years ago, of course, the average person is much better off today. Some people say the average person uh, is more comfortable, for example, has more amenities than uh, a nobleman, a noble uh, man had 200 years ago. But I think it's all relative. Uh, I think people are uh, suffering. Uh, you know, the job situation hasn't improved since the 08 crisis. Like in France, I, I watched a, a year or two ago about the yellow vest. These people are, are not uh, making ends meet. And they see uh, that the, the top 1% and the politicians, uh, they're raking it in. <laughs> they're on their private jets. Uh, there's a lot of uh, animosity. I think, uh, you know, it's all about relative wealth. And um, I think people are angry because they're, they've realized that uh, they're the ones who saved the system uh, because if it wasn't for the taxpayer, uh, for governments and central banks lumbering all the debt that they use to bail out the system onto the taxpayer, uh, the city of London, the bankers in Paris, Frankfurt, uh, New York, uh, they would have gone bust in 08, 09. So I, I think uh, this is a, it's a mixture of things. And now as well, I think we could have uh, protests and riots because of what they're doing. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of people who are waking up to this uh, engineered crisis, as I've said many times. Uh, Marcus uh, Johansson, thank you for the super chat. Is there some way to work around VAT on silver? Yeah, there, there are. Uh, if you Google uh, uh, silver, uh, no, VA, no VAT in silver, there is a company in Germany that you can buy uh, silver from without VAT. I forgot the website. But uh, one thing I would say, the first time I bought silver in 2003, I think I paid £3.20 uh, for an ounce. The VAT made it like... Uh, I paid like three sixty, three pounds sixty. Nowadays, silver I don't know is at uh, twenty. How much is it in uh, pounds? Let's have a look. Uh, twenty pounds fifty. So I I bought it for three pounds sixty with the VAT. <laughs> so the VAT doesn't even matter uh, uh, really to me. So that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, just buy the silver. Uh, yeah, if you can find somewhere in Germany, uh, which you can, if their price is good, if the shipping doesn't really uh, cost you too much, do it. But don't be, uh, don't let the VAT stop you from buying silver. I mean, when I bought it at 360, I was like, uh, I was a bit like you, I was a bit uh, skeptical. But I did it, and now it's like 20, 40, and I don't care about the extra 40 cents, uh, uh, pence I paid. Uh, Bible studies, uh, King James 1611. Can the government outlaw Bitcoin, causing people to rush into precious metals? Well, Bitcoin is basically a, a computer program. It's difficult to outlaw that. So... Who knows? 
I, I have very little cryptocurrency. I prefer precious metals. I think uh, with the uh, all the apps, all the track and trace, all all the things that they could bring, like uh, stopping uh, your, uh, you know, with this crisis, I want to be outside the digital system. I think it's dangerous. Uh, not that they can take your Bitcoin, but you won't be able to spend it. If you do something wrong, uh, if you uh, don't have enough social credits, right, your uh, your app, your phone won't, won't function. Graham Hobbs, no non-VAT silver sell, sell to gold, okay, or, or silver to go. Yeah, I, I've seen those. I, I'm not too bothered about the VAT, as I said, because I think silver is going a lot higher. But uh, yeah. Alex Alexander. Hi, Alex. John Colorado from Denver. Helton Ernesto. Boa noite, he says. That's good, good evening in Portuguese. Hi, and Helton. Hazy wildfires in Colorado. I heard there's fires. Is there fires also in Northern California? I think. Mr. Guppy, if you really want gold and silver, buy jewelry casting grain. It ships to you in small pieces. I completely disagree. Gold and silver are worth much at all with a virus that will never go away. Um. I'm not sure what that means. I mean, um, I think the the thing about gold and silver, the reason they're not going up, <laughs> it's the the currencies that are going down because they're printing so much of it, they're creating so much debt, and, and that's what gold and silver do. They they're just true true value, real value, and uh, it look they're not really going up. <laughs> the currencies are going to continue to go down, and um, so there you go. I don't agree with that. I, I don't think there is a, a virus or a pandemic. <laughs> it's just a, a bad flu. <laughs> or here in the UK, they haven't counted a lot of the uh, flu deaths. It's just uh, an engineered crisis to scare people. And it's done a really good job, though. And uh, I would say as well... Um, if you think this isn't going going away and the economies are going to be in a depression, the, the bankers and the politicians are going to keep printing. And uh, when that happens, uh, you get hyperinflation eventually. All the countries where you've had hyperinflation, uh, the economies were in a depression. Uh, it was so in France in the 1790s. Uh, it was so in Germany in the early 1920s. And it's also in Venezuela. It was also in Brazil in the 80s. Uh, it was also, it's also been in Argentina, which is a basket case of an economy. So, yeah, just because uh, the economies are gonna, not going to pick up doesn't mean that the currency uh, is going to be worth anything. Yeah, Victor, I, I agree with you. Arnold Villeneuve says he's got friends. Well, um, how old are they? And <laughs> I mean, uh, there's uh, 1,600 people dying uh, or 150,000 people die in the world every day. So should we stop living for that? And, uh, you know, that's part of life. You, 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 you're born and then you die. <laughs> I'm sorry to say. I haven't seen, I haven't heard of anyone for six months where I live here <laughs> who's had this thing or who's died of it or anyone really. Uh, if it was real, uh, we'd all be seeing bodies stacked up everywhere. We'd seen hospitals like uh, 
they closed the hospitals that they opened these, uh, what are they called? Nighting, nightingale hospitals. They closed it back in May because <laughs> there wasn't any, anyone going into them. Anyway, let's, let's stick to the uh, precious metals. Uh, let's stick to the economy to debt. Be as it may, uh, they're going to keep, uh, keep this going anyway. <laughs> All right, Arnold Villeneuve. Are you uh, Gilles Villeneuve's uh, brother? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, Bobby, uh, 827. I would do uh, a little bit of shopping around. Uh, bullion by post, uh, gold investments, which I have a promo code, and also At Atkinson's the bullion. Uh, also, ATS bullion, they're pretty good. Last week I was checking. Uh, the only one who was delivering uh, next day or two days was a gold investments. Price might, might be a little different. It's just okay anyway. Let's. Uh, the other thing as well, uh, Willie Gerard, and I, this is the last thing I'm going to say. If things were so bad, so many people were dying, people would be clamoring to have a vaccine. And that's not true. I, I saw a statistic that only 60% of Americans would uh, vaccinate. SW, hi, SW. Uh, Royal Mint, maybe uh, for silver they have good deals, but I think their uh, sovereigns, their gold is really expensive. I think the most important thing in terms of health is <laughs> to try to look after yourself. It's like... Uh, I'm not saying I'm the healthiest person, but uh, it all depends what you uh, put into your body, right? Mike Cron from Sacramento. Hi, Mike. Britannia versus Philharmonic. I think in the UK, probably better to have Brit Britannias because of their uh, coins of the realm. So you wouldn't be liable to capital gains tax if you if you were to make big gains. <laughs> Typical Brian, thank you. Uh, get your gold teeth here. <laughs> uh, selling natural gas, my thoughts. I haven't looked at natural gas. I know natural gas futures are really volatile, very dangerous. So you got to be careful. I think there was a big hedge fund years ago that lost, went bankrupt. Amaranth, I think was their name. Maybe use uh, options on it. Buy a put. <laughs> Lily uh, Robbins thinks SD bullion is good. Yeah, Silver Doctors. Yeah, June 12, 1776. I've seen uh, headlines. Uh, I think uh, President Trump is trying to keep the stock market goosed up. Uh, he's, uh, there's a headline here today, uh, tonight, saying that he's going to come out at 5.30, uh, half an hour before the futures market opens to announce a new uh, program for uh, treating coronavirus. Uh, he also says uh, Trump considers fast-tracking UK COVID-19 vaccine before election. So I thought Trump wasn't a globalist. <laughs> so uh, don't quite, it's all very confusing. That's the thing as well. I don't think any anyone knows exactly what's going on. And uh, I think what we're having is uh, a lot of infighting. 
in the establishment. And uh, I think we know like a fraction of what's really going on because the, the news and the stories and the agenda the, the public get uh, is completely different. I think Hillary Clinton said once that she's got a private, um, private message <laughs> and a public one. So they've got one story for us, but behind, behind the scenes is completely different. And that's why I think it, I, I, I think we can't really trust these people. And that's why uh, by holding uh, paper money, uh, national currencies, you're helping finance them. That's another reason not to be in fiat currencies. Uh, Pat, what do you think will come out of the Federal Reserve annual meeting in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, this coming Thursday and Friday? Hi, Pat. It could. It could. I guess it's not going to be in Jackson Hole this year. <laughs> it's going to be a virtual one, virtual one from, from what I heard. Yeah, I mean, last year, uh, I think uh, Mark Carney, who was still at the Bank of England, said the, the, the dollar uh, dollars uh, days as a reserve currency were numbered. They could come out with some kind of digital currency idea for central banks. And I listened to uh, Catherine Austin Fitz. She had a really good interview with uh, Greg Hunter. She said it, they don't really, uh, this digital currency is, it's not going to be any good. It's just, it's not even a currency. She thinks it's like a control mechanism uh, for people who are dependent on the government. They don't behave. They, they're tracked and traced. They can cut, cut it off. And she actually said she's very bullish of uh, precious metals, which is, quite interesting coming from her but she notes as well that people need to be self-sufficient uh it's not just about having gold and silver right that helps but you need to uh be uh, productive you need to be healthy as well and um i think that's really important olivier le roi thank you for your super chat Value not for for long. <laughs> yeah, five euros. Well, the euro has been going up this year against the dollar, though. SW says hit thumbs up for Monaco 64. <laughs> yeah, the dollar is already already digital. Yeah. There's also, I mean, even the a lot of people who use cards, debit cards, uh, online banking. I mean, we used to, I used to write checks <laughs> here in the UK, but for the last five, six years, I haven't seen a check. Uh, I think in the US, people write checks a bit more. Um, but uh, that doesn't mean to say gold and silver are no good to have because uh whatever uh, new currency they have i think uh, it's more about a uh, payment system right uh this new digital currency if they come up with the central bankers it's still going to be a crappy <laughs> excuse my french crappy store of value it might be good for transactions but that's about it but then again we've got uh Apps like uh, the Glint app, which I have a referral code as well, Mario Glint 60, uh, 79. Uh, that app, you know, you can store your gold, you can spend it. Uh, and I think they're going to come up as well. They're working on, they should be coming uh, on with a, a function, a peer-to-peer -peer function, where you'll be able to send uh, grams of gold to other people that have the app. So technically, you could bypass the whole banking system and pay someone with real gold through the Glint app. I, I need to, uh, I think they've been delayed a little bit. It was supposed to be launched in July, the peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. I think that's an interesting thing as well. Am I? <laughs> would I put all my gold with Glint? No, uh, but it's just uh, an option. For, for, for spending or even paying. I still think physical gold and silver is the best uh, way uh, because you're outside the system. 
But if you have gold with glint and you can send gold without going through the national currency, then you're outside the system. Uh, Paul Kelly, I work on ambulance, no plague pots, no testing stations, empty wards, but ICU full of all the usual respiratory patients, uh, intensive care unit. Yeah. And I think a lot of people uh, are also, I think uh, this fall and winter, usually people get colds and flus and they cough. And uh, I think with all the stress we've had the last six months, with people covering their faces, not breathing properly, uh, there's going to be a lot of people. People are going to be even more ill this fall and winter. And everyone's going to say, oh, I've got, uh, you know, the the C word. <laughs> uh, JM, U.S. is giving Glint a hard time, I'm sure. I don't think so. I think uh, Glint has a U.S. office. I'm not sure. I, I haven't heard anything about the U.S. government giving them a hard time. Maybe. What's the number one performing commodity during hyperinflation? Uh, Dave, Delve, Delve. Um, well, uh, gold, I would say, uh, is the most, uh, the best performing commodity. Uh, silver, I think uh, during the German hyperinflation, it didn't do as well because silver is very bulky. So, yeah, I would say gold out of the precious metals. And I'm not certain about all the commodities because gold and silver are monetary commodities. But my guess is that it's the precious metals because hyperinflation is the collapse of the fiat currency. So when the fiat currency collapsed, the the only thing standing in terms of money is gold, right? People lose all faith and confidence in the government, in the state. Cozy Fantuti, uh, evening, Mario. Do you think precious metals will gain ground after the U.S. election? Well, I can't tell you exactly uh, whether it would do well or, you know, uh, before or just after the election. But I think we're going to do well toward until the end of the year. Gold is going higher. Uh, I don't know. I can't tell you exactly, um, you know, what it will do at a certain month. But I think we're going to continue to see a precious metals higher. Uranium mining. Uh, I think someone asked me about uranium. That I think that is a contrarian investment. I haven't followed uranium recently. I did buy some uranium stocks like over 10 years ago. I was looking into that, uh, but uh, I haven't recently. Johnny OC, do you know of an options broker in the UK, mostly spread betting? Uh, Johnny OC, I, I do my options through IG.com, and that's a spread betting platform. They're quite good. Uh, right now, I bought about a week ago uh, uh, some puts on the uh, on the FTSE. So, yeah, IG.com. Helton Ernesto Katastrophenhauser. That's the, uh, that's the hyperinflation. That's how they call it in German. Yeah, that's the hyperinflation, catastrophe and house of. Yeah, that's when the currency collapses. I think Von Mises used that term. And also the flight to uh, tangibles, that's the same thing. Uh, the demand for uh, currency collapses in the hyperinflation. People want to get rid of it. They want anything but the national currency. And I saw the... Uh, CPI uh, data, which measure prices in the UK, they call it inflation here, but be as it may, it, it was higher than expected. Uh, last the, the, the last number that came out, the RPI, for example, was almost 2%, 1.6. 
Uh, Pablo Pina, how can Glint uh, be sustainable outside the system? Well, uh, the guys at Glint w were explaining to me, uh, if a shop has the facility, if they have a Glint account and you've got a Glint account and you go to uh, your local shop and you pay in gold, uh, there's nothing against that in the UK. Uh, HMRC or Inland Revenue, uh, they accept foreign currencies. They consider gold a currency. So all, all that the, uh, the shop owner has to do uh, when he gets paid in gold is to do the, for the foreign exchange and account for it in pounds and pay his tax in pounds. So it's not a problem here in the UK. You can use any currency to pay uh, things here in the UK as long as the, uh, the business owner accepts it. I could go to a shop and they probably won't accept dollars or euros, but uh, yeah, technically it's not illegal here in the UK. Uh, Kenneth from New Zealand, appreciate and learn from you your wise words. No VAT on silver in New Zealand or Oz, which helps been well into real money for several years. Oh, oh good to hear, Kenneth. Chris R., I want to be asleep. <laughs> uh, we are all Austrians here. Yeah. Uh, KDV, what do you think of the possibility of fraud with number of shares of miners? Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, of course, there is a possibility. Uh, and uh, there's there's going to be, I think it's probably going to be like in the 90s with the dot-com bubble. There's a lot of companies that came, put a dot-com to it and they were worth billions and they happen to be worth nothing. So you need to be careful, of course. Um, I did a video, I think yesterday, yeah, about how to uh, build your mining portfolio. And uh, what I do is look at what the professionals are doing. Go into the sprout.com. Uh, prospectus and see what they're investing in. It doesn't mean to say it's going to be safe, but uh, if they're, uh, they've got companies in their portfolio, it means that they have done some homework. Yeah, listen to people online as well in Kitco or King World News, uh, things like that. But of course, there will be, uh, there's always fraud, unfortunately, in every business. Uh, and uh, that's why I think personally for me, uh, physical gold and silver are the, are the best. Uh, but if you want to speculate a little bit on gold and silver, if you want to be a bit greedy, I guess, uh, do some uh, mining, mining stocks. But that's up to you. There is the risk as well. Could you follow the numbers? of some mining shares in your show. No, I, I don't do that. No, I, I try not to uh, do things like that, like uh, advise people on which stock to buy. I give them an idea how to go about choosing it. Um, I think it's up to you, uh, to the individual to do their homework. So there you go. I mean, my video yesterday, I gave an example of the companies that I might be looking at. So you might Want to look at that? Uh, Bot King, why did you move to the UK? Is it nicer nicer than where, uh, Bot King? <laughs> uh, well, I moved to the UK in 1992. I was living in Switzerland at the time, in Geneva. I had a good job. I started out in Geneva, but I was offered a, a good job here in London as well. And, uh, so I moved here, and I do like uh, England. Um, yeah, I do. Even though it's changed a lot, I still like uh, like the place. Malcolm Collins, uh, surely people will value food and water, perhaps alcohol. Of course, <laughs> all the time, of course. But all I'm saying is that... Um, when the currency collapses, uh, your the money in the bank or the, the paper money or currency you have, it's not going to buy much. So, yeah, if you have a precious metals, a bit of gold and silver, it'll go a long way. Uh, and 
and also uh, hyperinflations and currency collapses, they don't last for years. It happens very quickly in a matter of months. So eventually uh, things rebound very quickly. So, uh, yeah, you don't need that much to uh, get through it. And, of course, uh, having food and water and everything is important, but uh, being able to uh, access that as well. People say, oh, you can't eat gold, but I'm sure a farmer would accept a gold sovereign uh, for, you know, for whatever he has. He wouldn't accept the paper money that's worthless. Or you could work for him for, for uh, two days and he'll pay you with something, you know, barter. Uh, Paul FL, thank you for your uh, super chat donation. Cool. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Steve McRae. Debt is now higher than after World War II. How can we get rid of uh, debt? Negative interest rates. Uh, I don't think that's the solution. The way to get rid of debt is uh, to let uh, rates... Uh, go higher. Rates are negative because the central banks are creating even more debt to buy the debt <laughs> uh, because, yeah, it's crazy. So if interest rates go up, all the debts will be destroyed. Uh, but then the, all the bankers and the big, uh, the 1%, they'll lose all their investments. That's the only way to get out of it to let the market do its job with interest rates. Because when interest rates go up, bond prices go down, they, they collapse, the debt implodes because the, the companies, the governments, the people who borrowed money, they won't be able to pay back anymore. So those debts are wiped out. That's the only way. Negative interest rates will only delay the process and make it even worse when it actually happens. Uh, SW in the universal basic income, it, it probably will come to the UK and they will link that uh, with the uh, COVID passport and all that rubbish, I think. And uh, all the social, uh, how can I say, social credit. Uh, so that's why I, I try to uh, tell people, uh, you know, try to uh, be self-sufficient, try to be... Um, prudent, uh, try to get out of debt, try to have, um, you know, hope, try to have a, a skill, <laughs> discipline, uh, hard work, you know, because then you don't have to depend on them. Uh, it, it, it is tempting and like to stay at home and do nothing and get paid by the government. But uh, that's, a, I think, a deal with the devil, in my opinion. Hi, Brad. Uh, GDX, G GDXJ. I, I think uh, two or three weeks ago, I got, I took a little bit of profit. And then a week later, I switched GDX and GDXJ into uh, Hecla Mining, which actually was doing well, it hasn't been doing too well right now. So, uh, and I, I'm deciding to uh, also buy some other uh, stocks. I did a video yesterday how to build a mining portfolio if you watch watch that you have an idea what what i'm looking at um so there it is but i think gdx and gdxj are still going to do well steve can Van, Ken Meter is like the opposite of Maneco. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what that means. Rainbird, uh, hope is here. Catherine Osmond Fitz's latest show, 100 Examples of Deep State Failure. Well, she, she, I saw her interview with, uh, Greg Hunter, she, she's positive. She doesn't think they will succeed, the bad guys. I hope she's right. 
one nine two one six eight Steve Van Meter. Yeah, I haven't heard of that. Someone has mentioned that person, but I don't know who he is. Uh, Victor Claudio, people are holding on to cash. Well, I think that's very dangerous. I think you're in Brazil, right, Victor? And uh, I have a cousin in Brazil. He's in the uh, construction, uh, real estate development. And uh, he said he's very busy in the south of Brazil. And he said the reason why is because Brazilian interest rates have gone down a lot. So people are, are taking their money out of the bank because in Brazil, you could get almost 10% on your money. And uh, it's all going into property. So uh, cash is not going to be good uh, anywhere, and especially in Brazil as well, I think. Uh, Boatski Gaming, thoughts on US dollar? Uh, down versus everything. Uh, versus real things, versus gold. I wouldn't hold U.S. dollars only enough to uh, conduct, uh, you know, to pay my bills and do whatever I need to. But I wouldn't save in U.S. dollars, nor British pounds, nor euros, nor Aussie dollars, nor Canadian dollars, none of the paper currencies. Uh, I did a video yesterday. I did two videos uh, about the dollar index, which is uh, a basket against uh, the major currencies measuring the dollar and I and I said that uh, the cycle for the dollar even versus fiat currencies is lower probably for the next four three to five years maybe four years but versus gold uh, the prospect is even worse not just for the dollar but all fiat currencies Evander uh, have you ever thought of opening a video with Maneco home of mainstream economics and conventional views <laughs> just to mess with people. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe I will. <laughs> home of the home of Keynesian, Keynesian and central banking ideas. Uh, the reason I do that every time I do my videos, I, I know <laughs> a, a lot of people have been watching me for years know who I am, but, uh, with YouTube, you're always getting new viewers, so you, you need to let them know who you are and what uh, your message is. I know <laughs> it's a bit annoying always listening to uh, to that, but that's, uh, you know, not everyone knows that I am the home of uh, alternative economics and contrarian views. Harry Dent is phony, <laughs> Graham Hobbs. <laughs> I uh, don't disagree with you. Robert Browning, uh, we are on the silver bull. Cryptos die with EMP, silver to gold ratio one to one. That's fine with me. Oh, let's see here. The common denominator. Hey, Monaco, did you work for a mega bank? Are you a Zionist UN member? I don't think, uh, I, I've never heard of, any individual being a member of the UN, I think it's more of a supranational uh, entity, like a country. Uh, no, I, I have worked for banks. I worked in the city of London. I've said that to people, and I don't anymore. So I'm not a Zionist, nor a UN member. Uh, common denominator, yeah, that's why I tell uh, my viewers they have to be their own central banker. Uh, I mean, if you've watched my videos, uh, <laughs> I'm central banking is uh, one of the planks of the Communist Manifesto, and uh, we need to get rid of central banks. But uh, that's the other thing I was thinking the other day. You know, uh, we've only got ourselves to blame, the general public and people in general, because they like having the inflation because they get a lot of the uh, welfare. They get a lot of warfare as well. The big corporations love inflation. Um, it's like um, Catherine Austin Fitz said, you know, pr 
press the red button, all of that stops. People are not willing to give that up. Common denominator, okay. Looks like he's a troll. <laughs> Uh, silver more value than gold? Um, historically, it, it has never been. So if you go back hundreds of years, so maybe in some kind of wacky crisis, it could get one-to-one, -one, but I, I think uh, gold will uh, be more um, valuable. Hey, Lord Humongous, nice to see you. Pablo Pina, what is switch for political stability when the whole world economy and fiat burn like Venezuela? Uh, well, the only way we can get uh, stability again is through a lot of pain, unfortunately. And I think there will be, you know, I'm not trying to be a, a Cassandra, but the problem with the world has been that... Uh, the last 20, 30 years, is that people never want to go through bad times. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Well, uh, politicians, central bankers, uh, they always come and save save the day. And I think it started with Alan Greenspan in 87 when you had the stock market crash uh, 500 points in a day or 22%. And he came and flooded the system and saved the day. And ever since then... Uh, yeah, and, and I think uh, it's permeated into finance, into uh, academia, into health. So, yeah, uh, I think the pharmaceutical industry is, is kind of a symptom of that. Uh, you know, you don't sleep well one, one night and you, you go and you take a, a pill to, to sleep better. Or, you, you know, instead of just letting nature take its course. So I, I think, uh, yeah, that's the only way it will be stable again. But we're going to go through the, a crisis that will be biblical. And I think we're in it already. So there you go. Take a few more questions. We're uh, approaching the one hour mark. Christopher Canover, thank you for your super chat. <laughs> uh, buy Billy a big silver bone <laughs> at what point will US dollar lose world reserve currency status what will be the indicator that it has so thanks yeah I think it will be after uh, I mean we're going through a crisis right now uh, I think uh, I was listening to Catherine Austin Fitz uh, she was talking about how uh, the dollar and the and sterling were the both reserve currencies from 1914 to 1944. Uh, and then you, after the end of World War II, um, the UK couldn't sustain it anymore because it was bankrupt, basically. <laughs> so I think this is the beginning. So I, I think the uh, US will be so indebted by the end of this crisis that um, the, the dollar will be... Um, it won't disappear, but it won't be the, the major reserve currency. I think right now it's almost two-thirds of uh, all the world central banks or, and governments hold dollars. It could go down to, like, let's say, 50% uh, and still be important. But let's say it goes down to a third. So there's going to be a third euros, a third dollars, uh, uh, maybe 25% yuan or some kind of uh, world currency. So, yeah, I, I think uh, I don't know how long this crisis is going to going to last. So but I think uh, once uh, there's like a line draw under this crisis, then you could say that the dollar will be be less important. And it's difficult to say what's going to uh, come after uh, the dollar. Usually it's another another country and another reserve currency, but I, I have a feeling it could be different. I think gold and silver are going to be important again as well because all the other fiat currencies uh, 
are uh, dependent on their the dollar for their value. That's what people forget. So if when the dollar goes, gold and silver are going to come back, in my opinion. Uh, Victor Claudio, I agree with you about uh, silver, gold silver ratio and Dow gold ratio. Uh, William Birkenrod, uh, you are showing a way for all of us to begin to coalesce. These times, the most difficult goals is consensus. Industrial use of gold and silver both underplayed. Mario, you will you move farther out? I don't know if you live in the city. Uh, I live. I don't live in central London. Uh, I live relatively near to the country. Uh, I think it's still uh, early days to think about moving. Um, yeah, I don't want to jump the gun. I think the crisis is going to get worse. I think we still have time to move wherever we can. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've considered uh, Brazil or even Italy, which might not, not sound good, but uh, it's closer to some of my family in Switzerland. And uh, who knows? But uh, the thing is, <laughs> I think right now, uh, the, it's more of a question of better, better the devil you know. And by that, I mean, you know, if you're comfortable where you live, I know, and there's, it's not going to be great anywhere really right now. So I think people need to uh, wait and see what happens uh, in the next six to 12 months, maybe decide after that. That's my, my way. I don't want to like rush into things. All right, everyone. So uh, we've gone over an hour. So I wish you all a great rest of the weekend and I'll, I'll talk to you uh, uh, tomorrow. And uh, any of you who haven't subscribed and are here for the first time, think about subscribing. And thank you very much, everyone. Take care.